Hi, I'm Kathleen Dunphy, and welcome to the second episode of Backstories, where I talk about the motivation and inspiration behind my paintings. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the many animal paintings that I've been working on. Um, this one is called Bottoms Up. Um, it's fresh off the easel. In fact, I think it still might be a little bit wet. I just painted it last week. It's 30 by 24 inches, and it's oil on linen. I love animals. I'm surrounded by animals where I live. In fact, my dog Ellie is right over there watching me right now. And out the window here, where we live in Northern California, I have goats and chickens and, and cats, uh, as well as in the neighboring area, we have horses and, and cows. And it's, it's just a beautiful area with a, an abundance of subject matter for me to paint, both animals and landscapes. Probably the most successful animal paintings that I've done have come from situations that I didn't expect to find, where I've just sort of stumbled on something and um, it ended up being something great to paint. And that's exactly what happened with this painting. I was out last week painting at a ranch uh, near where we live, and actually I was painting a, an old pickup truck with um, hay bales and pumpkins. I was doing a gouache painting of that. And, but as I was doing that painting, out of the corner of my eye, I kept seeing this, these, this motion and, the, and this light on the uh, white feathers of these geese. And I just couldn't wait to hurry up and uh, finish that painting and, and grab my camera and sketchbook and, and go over and see what the geese were doing over there. I always carry my sketchbook with me and I always have my camera with me because you never know what's go what you're going to, to, to find out there. And I was really happy that I had those with me um, last week. So I, I take photographs so that I can get various poses of the animals and animals don't really stand still very long to, to paint them. They don't, they don't cooperate too well for that. Um, but I also sketch before I do any um, animal painting and that's in order to understand the anatomy and also to better understand what would be a more common or typical pose for the animal to take. Sometimes photographs you can get an awkward movement that isn't really necessarily something that the animal would do naturally. Um, so I sketched and I took a bunch of photographs and then I just couldn't wait to get home and start working on another painting. Um, so oftentimes when I do a larger multi-animal painting, I'll start with a smaller painting of a single animal so that I can, again, better understand the anatomy um, and kind of figure out how to convey either the feathers or the fur, and then also to decide exactly um, what colors I'm going to use to um, paint that animal. I use a limited palette, but it helps me to figure out how I'm going to mix the colors that I'm going to use. I use the same palette all the time. But this, um, is the first painting that I did. This is called Preen and it's 16 by 20 inches. And what I really loved about this was the, the pose that the, that the goose is taking, that sort of twist. I, I love to try to convey motion in my paintings and, and I, I, I loved the way she was kind of looking down at her foot there. Um, but I also love the interaction that animals have with one another. You know, I think it's, it's very easy as human beings to feel like we're the only species that really talks. Um, but I feel like animals are talking all the time, they just don't use our language. And what I loved about this particular scene was the way that the animals, the geese were on the water and moving around and, and interacting with each other and dabbling and diving down and having this, this, this conversation with each other. And I wanted to try to convey the feeling of, um, of, of a community that these animals have. Um, I'm also really attracted to painting white objects. You know, there really is no pure white in nature. And if I were to take, for example, um, this roll of paper towels that's pure white, if I were to hold that up to the painting, you'll see that none of that, even the lightest marks on the painting, are not as white as this paper towel. And so to me, one of the most interesting challenges is to try to convey a white object and not use just straight white paint out of the tube. And it doesn't necessarily have to be white feathers. It could be snow or it could be granite. It could be uh, light colored cliffs. Um, there's, anytime there's a, a super light object, um, I really enjoy trying to figure out how I'm going to um, create form and make that look realistic without um, using just pure white out of the tube. And this was such a fun subject matter to um, play with that whole idea. One of the other reasons I'm excited about this painting is because it's part of a show that I have coming up called Wild Things, and it's uh, both animal art and landscapes um, that I've painted recently. Um, the show is going to be a Facebook Live virtual event. It's going to be on December 11th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 
and you'll be able to view the paintings and um, ask questions, chat with me, um, trying to create a little bit of that, what it used to be like to go to openings that we can't do anymore in this pandemic era. So I hope you all can join us for the virtual show and um, see a selection of my animal paintings there. So thank you for watching this episode of Backstories and stay tuned for more episodes where you can learn a little bit more about my work and what I'm thinking about when I approach the easel. Thank <laughs> you.